Lynchburg, nestled in the hills of Middle Tennessee. Not close to anything, the population 361. It is said unless you're headed for Lynchburg, you won't pass through it. And it was about the same when Johnny Majors was growing up there as a boy. He used to shoot marbles on the courthouse square. Well, I can't think of a better place to grow up and grow up in Lynchburg, Tennessee. I mean, you just couldn't find a better place. No one was real poor, no one real rich, except for the Motlows, who owned the Jack Daniels Distillery. We grew up in an area where you didn't lock your doors, naturally, and there was no air conditioning at that time, no television, so there was a lot of activity. Uh, people sitting on the swings uh, in the evening, you know, after supper. Johnny ever good help around the garage? Never did anything but played ball. <laughs> he, he was good at ball. He started with ball and he finished with ball. He got up with ball and went to bed with ball, and it was all ball. <laughs> if he ever did anything else, I don't know what it was. <laughs> We had some great times. Nobody could have had a better growing up than we did have. I mean, my mother and my grandmother used to tell me that when I was three and four years old, I'd be out in the, in the front yard running real quick on the dirt in the, in the, in the yard. And my, I'd work so hard and fast that my, my, my grandmother would say, Elizabeth, John's going to die. He's, he's, his face is all red. My mother and father both very competitive, but they were genteel people. And my dad was a gentleman, my mother, my mother was a lady, but they were both very competitive and they expected you to do right. We didn't always do right. We had five boys in my family. I used to pick on Joe and Bill some, that's the only reason I got my only whipping because I was picking on them and the daddy said that they still both cried or told daddy that I was picking on them. And I was raised by one of the greatest coaches of all time in high school and college. That was my father. We were the winningest team in the entire state. When I played for the Huntland Hornets, we went third 25 straight games, lost one game my senior year to Lynchburg. We were 30 and one. When I left, Bill Majors in 53 started as a blocking back. In the next year, Bill Majors started as a fullback. And after Joe graduated as a tailback, went to college, Bill Majors moved to tailback his junior and senior year. In all 41 games, they were 40, no losses, one tie. The Huntland Hornets. I wanted to play college football all my life since I was a little boy. I wanted to come to Tennessee because I was a single wing tailback. And they were single wing, but I didn't think I could play here, you know, and I, I didn't. But I knew I was going to go to a big school. And I came to Tennessee. We caught the Greyhound or Trailway bus, one or the other. We were before daylight, and we took the express bus. And I'll never forget, they let us out at Ellis and Ernest Drugstore, right on the stadium drive. Tennessee Stadium was big and impressive. I had nightmares in the summer but about coming to Tennessee. I didn't know whether I could stay alive or not, but I thought they'd kill me up here. First, I didn't think I'd survive the first scrimmage. And I was very, very anxious, I'd say scared, pretty well frightened, but I had to show up. Johnny Majors began his journey toward All-American honors as a sophomore, when he first lined up at wingback 
in the first quarter of Tennessee's opening game with Mississippi State in Memphis in 1954. Some of the recollections I can remember most that made an impact with me the first year that Coach White was here. In 55, the first two games we lost close games to Mississippi State and Duke. And, but you could see where we were very close to winning. We barely got beat, and you could see we were playing w without Thomas. Uh, we reshoveled some of our personnel the first two weeks, and we got better. The Alabama game was a big game. We won, we won the game 20 to nothing in Birmingham, which was really a start in Coach White's regime, in my opinion. Also, tying Georgia Tech, we were underdogs in Shields Watkins Field in Neyland Stadium, and we tied them 7-7, seven to seven, and I remember playing 60 minutes that day, I think I'm the last player that played 60 minutes of football at Tennessee, and never left the ball game. And Johnny Majors was named the most valuable player in the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee opened its 1956 season against Auburn in Birmingham, and scored early. Later, in the second quarter, Majors ran the tailback option left and found Cruz again, this time for 34 yards and a touchdown that put the balls ahead 14 to nothing. Auburn fumbled the kickoff, and Majors again used the pass, this one for seven yards to Ed Cantrell for the third touchdown, en route to a 35 to seven victory. What do you remember about the six to nothing win over Georgia Tech at Atlanta? Well, I remember the excitement that uh, led up to the game and remember that so much was at stake. And I think both teams and both schools and coaching staffs all realized that all the eggs were in this one basket. We were playing for all the marbles in this ball game. And all my life, uh, I'd heard about how tough it was to win at Grant Field. <laughs> by the magic words, unbeaten, untied. Lock and struggle, but the volunteers have All-American passer Johnny Majors, who tags All-American then Buddy Cruz with a pass. The ball goes to Majors, he rifles it to Cruz, who goes to the one-yard line. On the next play, Tennessee goes over. Tech string is broken, six to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, looks All-American football team from 1956. Here they are. John Majors, University of Tennessee, 167. That's about my size. Huh? I can't sing this. <laughs> As usual, Coach Majors stole the spotlight, quipping that uh, he couldn't sing to Perry Como, which brought the house down. Elvis Presley may have been the best known Tennessee in 1956, but Johnny Majors wasn't far behind, finishing second to Notre Dame's Paul Horning in a controversially close Heisman balloting. John Forscott, unfortunately, did not win the Heisman. That darn guy that did threw three touchdown passes and 13 interceptions that year, and they give him the Heisman Trophy. They won two ball games and lost eight. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Did you think he got shafted with a guy on a 2-8 and eight team winning the Heisman <laughs> Trophy? Well, Horn and I have kidded each other a lot of times about that, though. In fact, here is some of that kidding from Paul Horning, the golden boy himself. At the end of the interview, I didn't tell him I was going to do it. I said, now, Johnny, we've got a national television audience. Now, why don't you tell the people, you really thought you should have won the Heisman at 56. And I caught him off guard, you know, and John looked, and he kind of got that, well, I mean, he, he was absolutely befuddled. And he said, well, now that you mentioned it, yes, I did. <laughs> Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. This little cup may seem small, but it comes from a small business, one of thousands on eBay, powered by millions of people, all working to give you exactly what you want. And that's no small thing. That's everything. This beer looks just like beer. But what if we told you its recipe is over a hundred years old? Created in Mexico by a German brewmaster. It's not just any beer now, is it? Dos Equis, the most interesting beer. 
Your car will get scratched, but Quix PSR will remove them. Quix advanced technology fills scratches with surrounding paint. In a test of all scratch removers, Quix was proven to be the best scratch remover available and the only one capable of removing deeper scratches. And for scratches that penetrate the primer, there's Quix PRP, the pen that seamlessly replaces your car's clear coat. So don't just fix it, Quix it at Walmart and these fine retailers. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. Let's go to Sugar Bowl Stadium. Johnny Majors in the tailback position. Takes the ball. Tears loose from Harrington's grasp, and he swings left into the end zone for the touchdown. Tennessee scores. During my last year at Tennessee playing football and going to school, um, our head coach, Bowden Wyatt, uh, told me, I said, Johnny says, uh, if you decide you want to go into coaching, I'll have a job for you. So I started coaching there and spent more of my time uh, maybe in the student center than I did in staff meetings. You know, talking to some of my former teammates and checking the girls out. And I spotted Mary Lynn, who was a freshman at that time, and I was a freshman coach, a student coach. And I, uh, I, I bought her a few times and called up and got a blind date with her. Mary Lynn Majors is from Chattanooga. She met Johnny when he was an assistant coach at UT. And when she met him, she had no idea what she was getting into. A real good friend of mine. I'd grown up with her. I uh, lived on the same floor in the dorm that I did, and so the first thing I did was go down and ask her about John Majors, because her dad had been really interested in Tennessee football and helped recruit. So I said, what's Johnny Majors like? And she said, oh, he's really a fast number. Be careful. So I, that's the way I approached oh, the day. She also said I look like a <laughs> farmer. <laughs> I'd go back to the fourth of the, I'd go to the student center an hour in the morning after our staff meetings. I'd go up there and stay about an hour, and check things out. And come back and uh, have lunch and get ready for practice. Uh, after about a month of going up at the student center twice a day, I came back in my little, little cubicle, and there's a nice little, little note. And Coach White had beautiful script writing. And uh, I could tell immediately it was his writing. And he said, Johnny, congratulations on your work. I'm thinking, over. When are you going to start? And it really, it really, it really uh, cut my tail feathers. And I started learning to thread a projector. I got my own recruiting area in New Hampshire and places where they didn't have but one or two football players. I got my own, initiated my own recruiting area. And it was a good lesson for me to start working in an organization. In February, I went to Mississippi State with my new bride. I was 24 and she was 20, Mary Lynn. And uh, I was scouting Tennessee. Tennessee played Ole Miss in Memphis. And I was going to pick up the uh, the Tennessee Ole Miss film. And the general was staying in a room with Gus Manning. So I knocked on the door, and uh, I said, I wasn't going to go in. And Gus came to the door and said, Gus, I'm here to pick up the film. I said, come on in. The general wants to see you. And so, so I came in, and we visited briefly. And he was very cordial. And, uh, and as I left, one of the biggest thrills, uh, one of my biggest thrills, uh, regardless what kind of coach I was or I am, when I when he started to close the door, as I walked in, he says, "Johnny, you're going to make a great coach." Now that's beside the point whether I was or not. But for the general to tell me that, and all the aura that he had, and the prestige he had, and the respect 
that he had from all of us who knew him and the people that played for him and coached for him. I walked out of that. wasn't any carpet. I walked out of there on thin air all the way to the elevator, and the elevator didn't have a floor to it. I was floating on a cloud. So on this October Saturday in 1965, the Majors brothers in coaching are having an unbelievable day. Johnny Majors is on the Arkansas staff, and they beat their old Southwest Conference rival, Texas, huge for the Razorbacks. That same day was an also a very big game for Tennessee, uh, 1965. And uh, Tennessee and Alabama tied in a very infamous play that happened in the last few seconds or a few minutes of that ball game. And it was a 7 7 tie. It was a big thing for Tennessee until Dickey's second year. That's about as good a Saturday for the Majors brothers as you can have. 48 hours later, a complete 180. It was a foggy Monday morning before 7 a.m. in West Knoxville. And on that morning, Bill Majors and two other universities. University of Tennessee assistants on their way into the office were hit by a train and killed. I got a call earlier in the morning. It was Coach George Caffigo. And he said, uh, I've got some bad news for you, Johnny. And uh, I said, what's that, Coach Caffigo? He said, little Billy got killed this morning. Well, I was devastated. I am just collapsing. I don't know what I said afterwards or anything. Went back and collapsed on the bed. I hadn't dressed. And it was, it was it just it tore me to pieces. Just, the most devastating thing that I ever had happen to me in my life. And remember, I never forget as long as I live, um, uh, we drove down behind the hearse. And everywhere we'd go through from here to, to Lynchburg, Crossville, Cookville, McMinnville, Manchester, Tullahoma, people. Well, we'll... People knew about it, and they were on the sides of the streets. People were on the sidewalks of the town squares, knowing that we were coming through. Let's go out there and play 30 minutes of football. Let's get after it, Let's go. He took Iowa State to two straight bowl games, something the school had never done. But then it was time for John Majors to look again for another challenge. Tremendous. Yeah, yeah you got the fans yeah. in there, too. Yeah. I think it's truly one of the finest opportunities in the country today. If not, I would not be here. You're Johnny Majors. It's 1976. You're on the cusp of a national championship. And now your alma mater has just lost to Kentucky seven to nothing. Bill Battle has had enough. And Johnny Majors gets a ride across the field. A dominating performance. Tennessee is going to make a change. And they want you to come home. You're 42 years old. At any point, you're going to be able to get any job that you want, including an NFL job. Because if you look at Pitt football after he left, Jackie Sherrill won 50 games in, I think, four or five years. They again played for, they played for another national championship. So he left a great program. And I firmly believe that he, he would have not gone anywhere else except Tennessee. That's so much his place meant to him. It would have been unthinkable that Tennessee would have called upon anyone else. There was no speculation. There were no interviews. There was no nothing. John Majors flew down here one Sunday and got with the powers that be, Dr. Bowling and the others, and it was all over. Bingo. Do you think there was too much made of it? No. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> but I only know one way to coach football and only one way to play it, and that's with pride and with enthusiasm. I'm not coming in here with my eyes closed. I'm coming in here with my eyes wide open. Very realistic, knowing it's going to take time, it's going to take effort to play the football that I think that you people want to play. 
the magnitude of that announcement, I remember it almost like it was yesterday. The first year that I came to Tennessee, so many of those players, I could, I could name so many of them right now who really had great attitudes and were coachable and have been very loyal to me. Uh, it, my life changed when Coach Majors came to the University of Tennessee when he came back. You know, he just won a national championship. Uh, you know, I was uh, just, you know, going into my junior year as a walk-on. That, that was a wonderful young, bunch of young men, but those players put up with me as, as demanding as I am. All season was, whew, it's the toughest off season I've ever seen, ever been a part of. There's no question about that. But it made me better, and, and, and it made me, it made me more hungry than I thought I could ever be to, to be successful. And uh, he gave me an opportunity to play, and uh, whew, I can't say how much it means. Coach Majors knew that there were certain things that you had to do to succeed and he knew they had to be done a certain way. And then what he did was he forced you to repeat those things over and over again in the way they needed to be done until they became second nature. And that was the way he, he created excellence. You know, some people uh, inspire excellence, and, and he did some of that. But really what he did was he required excellence. And that's probably not a great way to make friends, but it was a fantastic way to make men. I remember sitting in Neyland Stadium and you know, you're watching the pregame warmups and our legendary PA announcer, Bobby Denton, he would conclude his pregame introduction with, that's your starting lineup for the University of Tennessee Volunteers, coached by Johnny Majors. And the crowd just roars. I'll never forget seeing that tee open in the middle of the field and watching him run in, and the Vols go on to a massive victory that day. And at that point, I figure, well, you know, Tennessee's probably going to go ahead and win eight or nine games this year. Uh, I was 10. I didn't know. And little did we know that it was going to take Coach Majors some time to get Tennessee back to the level that he wanted to see the Vols play. This little cup may seem small, but it comes from a small business, one of thousands on eBay, powered by millions of people, all working to get you exactly what you want. And that's no small thing. That's everything. Feeling drained? So can your skin. Lather. Rinse. Refresh with Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash that washes away germs and moisturizes skin to refresh you and your skin with every shower. Mountain Dew welcomes you to the United States Collection with labels inspired by each state in our nation. Collect all 50 and get 100 bucks. Each bottle also gets you a chance to win a million dollars. When we're united together, we win. Cheers. Live from the Forum. Celebrate one of America's most successful rock and roll bands for one special night on ESPN. The Eagles Live from the Forum, Sunday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Now streaming on Disney Plus. Rated DG 13. Dental implants are going to give people that full aspect of their life back. At Clear Choice, we've been doing this for many, many years, and I think we truly help patients change their lives here. It's so meaningful to be a part of that impact. Come in, talk to us. You're going to get an education on what implants are, what the solutions are, what can be done.
This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by attorney Andrew Van Arsdale. For decades, the Boy Scouts of America admitted thousands of child molesters into their scouting ranks, enabling countless acts of sexual abuse to occur against innocent children. Your time to act is quickly running out. Bankruptcy funds allow for a limited window to take action. Act now before it's too late. If you are abused as a member of the Boy Scouts, call Abused in Scouting for a free confidential consultation. Hold them accountable for their failure to protect innocent children. Call 800-243-6046. ESPN is your source. He's available and he is free to be signed. All week on ESPN. This is Tennessee football, and the man behind this tradition is Coach Johnny Majors. But running out on the field on game day is the culmination of a week of intense and disciplined practice. It's been the trademark of Johnny Majors' coaching career wherever he's been. Why not stay uh, as the coach of the national champion of uh, Pittsburgh? Why come to a school like, like Tennessee? Why come home knowing that there's a chance you could really lose your butt? <laughs> That's a very difficult question. Why do human beings do a lot of things they do? You can look back and say, well, the easy way would be to stay and maintain a program that was very successful. Uh, I'd say also that uh, not to overplay it, but I've always looked forward to certain challenges, and certainly I've had my share of challenges. Uh, this was a challenge to me. You're listening to Johnny Majors on the line, the live telephone talk show. The number for you to call is area code 615-974-5375. We have a caller. Your question for the coach of the volunteers. Uh, this is Don Bell, Mo Creed. Coach, I'm just with the other people that's called in. I'm glad to have you here at Tennessee. and. Uh, the people out there at work that I work with, a lot of them say uh, that was hollering, Johnny, come home. They're saying go back. But we're with you all the way. <laughs> you just hope you just keep on winning. Well, keep coming, buddy. We're going to find a bus off for you. Thank you very much. The first couple of seasons for Coach Majors at Tennessee were tough. 1979, perhaps a low point on homecoming when Tennessee lost to Rutgers. Back in 60 seconds, as you're telling you the final score, Rutgers 13, Tennessee 7. Well, if you, if, you, if you coach long enough, there's going to be maybe an occasional ruck, Rutgers in your life. But one thing about it in this business, it's just like anybody does well in any other business in life. You let something drag you down lower and just get beaten, you don't get back up off the ground. And brother, you shouldn't be in coaching. You gotta learn to live with the, fight through the tough time. I'm saying, what's the old saying? Tough times don't last, tough people do. I believe that. I believe that. When when things were hard is when he was really, really good. Um, I mean, I, I don't know many coaches that, that coach from behind, and I don't mean that just in terms of game behind, the score behind, but coach from behind the eight ball as well as he did. Give him six. Touchdown, Tennessee! Tennessee's 40-18 victory over Notre Dame sets off the happiest celebration seen at Leland Stadium in many years. The Thanks in part to that huge win over Notre Dame, Tennessee was able to go to a bowl game that season, the first since 1974 for the Volunteers. Indeed, progress. But the 79 Blue Bonnet Bowl will be remembered not only for Purdue's great air game, but also for one of the most incredible comebacks in bowl history, Tennessee's rally that turned a route into a cliffhanger. What do you want, Tennessee? What I'd like to be the best football team in the country, and that's not easy and before that, before that I'd like to be the best football team in the conference but most of all I'd like to be able to live with myself knowing I've done this the best job I can do and that's been the way I've approached my job throughout uh, my coaching career I think one thing also that coach majors doesn't get enough credit for is he kind of changed how the SEC played offense uh, he understood speed was a big important factor and while some of the teams were trying to get their big tailbacks and just kind of keep crunching you Coach Majors found if you threw the ball down the field, uh, you had a chance to pick up big chunks or hit a home run. And so they went out and became wide receiver U. And other teams had to adjust their defense because Tennessee is going to throw the ball down the field. Cox was going to throw a bomb downfield to Willie Goff. This one will be 
I'll tell you, the 1982 Alabama game was uh, was really special. Well, the Alabama 1982 victory, uh, the University of Tennessee's breakthrough in, in, in more ways than one. When you scored against Alabama with 35 points, that was big time accomplishment, a big time accomplishment. Well, I got down off the shoulders and I shook hands with Coach Bryant. And after all, he'd been a lot of shoulders against a lot of coaches through the past. And I got off to him and said, Johnny, he said, you, you had a good game plan. Congratulations. That's it. Uh, that was such a huge win at Neyland Stadium. Has to be one of the top all-time victories. And I think kind of took some of the pressure off Coach Majors and kind of made the, the Tennessee fans relieved that, hey, this is the guy for the job. Go right ahead with your question for Coach Johnny Majors. I just wanted to congratulate you, the team, and the, and the coaches for the most exciting day we've had in Neyland Stadium. I don't expect I've got to beat Alabama six or seven years in the row to stay here. In fact, I don't know who they're going to try and do that, but I hope if they do, I'm the first one. Well, it wasn't six or seven, but it was four. And the win over Alabama showed Tennessee fans, the team, and everybody that there was progress being made at Tennessee. And winning seasons and championships were to follow. <laughs> I saw improvement in our film Saturday. I think you did too. An All-American player at Tennessee, twice National College Coach of the Year, Johnny Majors teaches pride and enthusiasm. His teams are disciplined in fundamentals, sound in execution. Each athlete learning and growing under one of college football's most respected and successful teachers. The most enjoyable aspect of coaching period is the actual work on the field with the young men who put the uniforms on, being teachers of young men. You're going to go for a point two yards up field, and you're going to attack the end, or whoever's the contained man. Don't run too deep. If you do, they're going to smell a mouth, and they're going to get deep to contain. We want to make it think it's a runoff tackle, okay? And keep them off your feet. You have to learn to recognize that and read with him. And go ahead now. Step, step. Get real low. Get real low. Get that, get that low. Okay. I can use my hand. See, and then Chuck can see. This time, Chuck, you go a little quicker. I'm too quick for you. We're in bad shape. I'm quicker. You are real bad shape, right? Hey, you gonna when you run the ball? Are you gonna are you gonna huck and buck when you get it? No, sir. No, you gonna run. Robinson on fakes, play action, long pass down into the end zone. The man is there. Give him six. Touchdown, Tennessee. Pass down into the end zone will be intercepted, Tennessee, as the game is over. Tennessee 38, Auburn 20. I'm so proud of the staff and their preparation, and you guys have to get it done. How you doing, fans? You enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. One last thing I'd like to say. <laughs> Watch what you say. We know why we won. We have to play up next year. We have to play nine more people this year. Right. Win with honor. Class. Win class. with class. Win with pride. And win with modesty. Juba back to throw, left hand, out into the flat, back, broken up, was that intercepted in midair? Ladies and gentlemen, what a play by Dale Jones. And the crowd is alive as Tennessee is moving to the Southeastern Conference Championship. Go, 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 go.
That season probably turned that team around, how Coach Majors and the staff guided them down the stretch, and that win over Miami set the foundation for Tennessee's run of great football teams in the late 80s and throughout the 90s. Formula One is back. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas, like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-329-6774. That's 800-329-6774. This was never just a game. People have to change their view of us. And it's shown us that humanity is greater than anything else that divides us. We're actually living and breathing human beings. We have a right to make it known, loud and clear. My patience left my body when I watched George Floyd take his last breath. Our lives matter. Ace is the only national retailer that carries Benjamin Moore paint. So now, Benjamin Moore's premium quality paint, along with Ace's award-winning service, are all right in your neighborhood. Just use Ace's color visualizer to pick the perfect paint for your place. And with Benjamin Moore's huge selection of colors, you can choose with confidence, knowing you're getting the best. If you want a new look, look no further than Benjamin Moore paint from Ace. Around the block, what you need in stock, with people who know their paint. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by attorney Andrew Van Arsdale. For decades, the Boy Scouts of America admitted thousands of child molesters into their scouting ranks, enabling countless acts of sexual abuse to occur against innocent children. Your time to act is quickly running out. Bankruptcy filings allow for a limited window to take action. Act now before it's too late. If you are abused as a member of the Boy Scouts, call Abused in Scouting for a free confidential consultation. Hold them accountable for their failure to protect innocent children. Call 800-243-6046. Well, let's hope the fun is just starting. And the only way for fun to start is for us to keep our minds on our business and play like the Tennessee Volunteers Southeastern Conference champions know how to play. And that's good enough to beat anybody and everybody on any given day. You know that, and I know that. That was one of the best talks. And every time I listen to it, I, it, it makes me want to play. You know, I'm, I'm getting old. Um, but I watch that and I feel like, I really feel like I can, um, I can go out and play after, after listening to Coach talk. Always at all times, whether we are ahead, tied, or behind. Intimidation factor. I want to reiterate that again. They don't have any respect for you. Make them remember you as long as they live. The way you hit. The way you knock them down field. And the way you hustle. Attack, attack, attack. Always attack. And by all means, have fun. What's it all about? You don't have a good time out there. Yes, here's the blitz. Dickey in trouble. Skips out. Throws it all into the end zone. Giving thing. Touchdown! Jeff Smith! Right now, we're having more fun than Miami's having. They're not having as much fun as you guys have because you got them frustrated. We're making too many mistakes. Offensively, we too many penalties. And it's pretty pass protection. We're in better condition than they are. Okay. Our condition will pay off in the third and fourth quarter. If you pour it to them, they're frustrated. We've got 30 minutes of tough football ahead of us. Play it on the line. We're going to kick off. That guy hesitates a little bit back there. He knows he don't. Don't you let up. Get after him like you've been doing. 30 minutes. We're in better condition. We're having more fun. Stick to him. 45, 40, 45, 50. Gets outside. 45, 40. 35, 30. 25, 20. 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, 60 yards, Jeff Powell. One of the most moving uh, times of my life was uh, when we took the bus ride back from the airport to Gibbs Hall. 
and seeing people along the highway waving their Tennessee banners, stopping their cars, blinking their lights on the way from work. And frankly, uh, I was touched to the point where I, I couldn't fight the tears back. I can tell you that. I don't cry a lot, but I'm not trying to be macho. It's just I've, I've, I come close a lot of times at movies and touching events, man, I get it comes awful close. But that time I couldn't fight them back because I said, this is a victory. And of course, what I say is important. I've often put it this way. I uh, don't think I've ever gotten any more pleasure out of a victory than this one because it meant so much to so many who have been so loyal to Tennessee through the years. Jeff's made a lot of progress. He's an intelligent young man, but I don't flatter him too much here. <laughs> he has ideal size and uh, he's a strong arm. He's very competitive and also very team-oriented. He's one of the most unselfish players we've had around. And we're excited about the progress he's made at quarterback. He was always pretty playful. And I just remember um, every, every spring, he would, um, they'd try new centers, and we'd always be fumbling snaps. And so, sure enough, when, when things went wrong, Coach Majors was going to insert himself. So sure enough, he, every spring, he'd come down. He goes, get in there. Take a snap here. And you'd like, oh, Coach. You just didn't want to put your hand under there because you knew he had his boxers on. It just was not pleasant. But it happened every year, and I knew it was coming. The 88 season was one that kind of took everybody by surprise. You knew that Tennessee was kind of building, and then suddenly they start the season 0-6. And, and Coach Majors makes the tough decision to fire Ken Donahue in midseason. By far, the most uh, difficult decision I've ever had to make as far as the staff team situation, not knowing what the outcome would be, but knowing, uh, as the action goes, change, even if it's wrong. We were going nowhere fast. Turning that 1988 season around and winning the last five games of the year gave Tennessee plenty of momentum. And following that season, back-to-back -back SEC championships. So he's, you know, he comes into one of the pregame meetings, uh, one of the Friday night meetings, and he says, let me tell you guys something. We got some great wins, 3-0. Every win in college football is a good win. But you have not won an SEC game. Let me tell you about winning an SEC game. When you win an SEC game, you just look better. I mean, your girlfriend thinks you're more handsome. Your family thinks you're more handsome. You just look better. I mean, you think about it. All these champions that are out there winning championships and playing great football, basketball, and baseball, they aren't the best-looking men. But they're champions, and it makes them very handsome. So I want everybody to be pretty on Sunday. Let's get a good win set tomorrow. This is Cobb. Up the middle, 20, 25, 30. Breaks outside, 35. Turns it on, 4, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Give him six. 79 yards. Touchdown, Reggie Cobb. The big back. Yeah! This game will never be forgotten by the living fans as long as you live. This particular day. It's outside to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 50, to the 10, to the 5. He goes all the way. Touchdown, Chuck Webb. No Tennessee team. Has ever won more games than this team has won in the first 99 years of our existence. We won 11, right, Haywood? Thanks, men. You're champions. Nobody in the country is any better than you are. Hold your heads high. There's a song on a great play, Damn Yankees. And the theme of it is you got to have heart. Kelly throws the ball full down at the 35, down to the 20, down to the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, down to the 4, down to the 3, down to the 2, down to the end zone. 
touchdown, Aaron Hayden. The kick is up. The kick is good. No, it is no good. It is no good. It is no good. I would like to say that this is a game that none of you, in my opinion, will ever forget as long as you live. That truly, for any football fan or so-called authorities on it, will go down as one of the all-time great football victories in this school's history, and I bet you there's never been a comeback that will compare to it in 101 years of Tennessee football. As it turns out, the only person that could slow down Johnny Majors was Johnny Majors. His heart condition in 1992 eventually led to his departure as the head coach at Tennessee. Good evening, UT coach Johnny Majors is in critical but stable condition tonight at UT Medical Center. I'm confident, just like Coach Majors said, he, he sent a message to the to the team, you know, straight ahead, and that's just the way that he, he uh, approaches things. You, you'll appreciate this, straight ahead, attack, attack, attack. <laughs> The departure was difficult for everybody who loved Tennessee. Uh, coach Fulmer was ready. Everybody realized that, and he went on to become a Hall of Fame coach in his own right. And yet, even if the time was appropriate, it was still hard to see John Majors not be at the University of Tennessee. Don't get to play forever in football, and I'll tell you this. If I could have played football till I'm 57 years old, which I am right now, I'd still be playing. <coughs> still be playing, because it's the greatest experience I think I ever had when I was a player. So enjoy it while you can. Watch the hell out of people. <coughs> the smile on your face and a good touch jaw and good look in your eye. I don't mean smile on your face every play, but I mean enjoy it. <coughs> And care the fact that they're going to be keyed up for what I think we will do. Care the fact that we keep there all day long. To do that in football and life, you can always walk around with your head up, your eyes alert, and you're also going to win a lot more than you lose. Think about it. Captains, you can report. You know what we're going to do, right? In your face. All right. <laughs> Exclusively on ESPN Plus, UFC 251, Saturday, July 11th, three title fights, live from Fight Island. Usman versus Burns, Volkanovski versus Holloway, and Giannis Aldo. New subscribers get UFC 251 and a year of ESPN Plus for only $84.98. With ESPN Plus, you'll get unrivaled UFC access, including exclusive fights and original content. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPV. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. This little cup may seem small, but it comes from a small business. One of thousands on eBay. Powered by people. Millions of people. All over the country, all working to get you what you want, exactly what you want. And that's no small thing. That's everything. This beer looks just like beer. But what if we told you its recipe is over a hundred years old? Created in Mexico by a German brewmaster. It's not just any beer now, is it? Dos Equis, the most interesting beer. Does your deodorant protect you all day? We put Dove Men Plus Care to the test with Mike, who transforms homes for those in need. I feel comfortable and protected all day long. Dove Men Plus Care, 48 hour freshness with triple action moisturizer. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. Tennessee football is really a rallying point 
for the Tennessean who has pride in his state, in my opinion, and has pride in the university and his football team. From Memphis to Bristol, uh, from the Alabama border to the Kentucky border, you're going to find people who are Tennessee through and through and whose blood really runs with a deep hue of orange. That's what I'm looking for at Tennessee, the guy and the lady who says, I'm a Tennessean through thick and thin, win, lose, or tie. I may not be very happy, but I'm going to bounce back next week and pull for my football team and for my state university and for the great state of Tennessee. He just loved this state. He loved every bit of it. He loved being a part of it. He loved wearing the orange shirt. You could see him in his last several years. He'd still wear his old letter sweater. You know, there are actually three people. There's Coach Majors, and then there's John Majors. John Majors, uh, who his friends knew. And that was a very intriguing, multi-dimensional person. And then there was Johnny Majors, who was the, the public persona. And I tell you what, people loved Johnny Majors. And he was also a personal friend of mine. I handled his insurance for the last 10 years, and I'm gonna tell you, I earned every bit of the comm any commissions that I made. In the last couple of years of his life, I was helping him with some, uh, with some biographical stuff, and he and I disagreed on what years he had been named National Coach of the Year. And I said, Coach, I looked it up on the internet, it was this year, and he said, no, it was this other year. And uh, we went back and forth a little bit, and he said, you know what, I know how we can answer this, Someone taught me about this. I can ask my phone. And he picked his phone up and he said, what year was I coach of the year? And, you know, I haven't expected the phone to answer him. Coach Majors had a bunch of memorabilia that was at Pittsburgh. And he had all that shipped to Lynchburg. And he contacted me and he also contacted Barry Rice, who's our videographer, about going down there and looking at this items and see what we might want to bring back that would be useful to Tennessee. It was educational. See a big difference in this terrain yeah. than what we've been? Yeah. Central Basin, Central Basin. He told us all about the Lynchburg area, about the, about the distillery, Jack Daniels in that area. Coach Majors was having a great day. So we're in good shape, great shape. Good job on your all's part. <laughs> Until. <laughs> well. What I do here, Bear? Straight? Straight. We had to get from Lynchburg to Huntland. And Huntland, he said to us, was about 30 minutes away. Bud had his way. Never fear, we got ways. And we start out, and all of a sudden, Coach Major said, take this shortcut. And after about an hour, what was supposed to be a 30-minute trip, I'd tell Coach Major, Coach Major, I don't, I don't think this is a shortcut. I believe we're, I believe we're headed to Winchester or somewhere, Coach. We're not going to hunt. Hold on, hold on. We need to, talk, we need to stop here. Sure. Coach, the Waze no, no, has. No, no, no. Let, me, let me stop here. Coach, really, Waze has. It. Bud ignored Coach Major's shortcut. We need to go this. No, way. I don't think so. No, 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 no. Coach, no. I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure we don't. Coach. So Bud went back to the GPS, which did not sit well with Coach. Majors. We oh, hold, let, let me ask him on here. I'm gonna see there's nobody there, Coach. There's a car there. Coach, this is not, we need to go this way. And I'll, I'll pay for the gas to come back. I'll bet you, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll bet you $50. Coach. I know, I know. You can't, you can't convince me of that at all. Finally, I had to say, Coach, we're making a left turn here because that's what the Waze is saying. So stop right here. Hold, 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 hold. Right. I want to ask, I want to ask this guy something. I just want to ask. Don't well, ask he's doing a weed eater. No, no, yeah. He's got a weed eater. He's not paying attention, Coach. Well, well, he can't. I want to ask him a damn question. What do you want to ask him? Well, I want to ask him. That's my business. And then we finally got to Huntland in about an hour and a half on a 30-minute trip. Well, Coach doesn't say anything to us, to bury myself, for about 20 or 30 minutes. And uh, then he finally begins to talk. You could tell we had upset him because he felt like he knew the shortcut. We drive all the way home, and we're visiting and everything. We get home, and the first thing he says to me, he says, Bud, if you had taken the shortcut I told you about, we'd be home 30 minutes soon. I finally did hear the message that I, he, he called me back. Um, I got it 
on Monday. And uh, the next day he passed. So I say that because, uh, you know, Coach Majors, although he was rough, tough, ruled with an iron hand, and, you know, you had to stay inside them lines. But if you stayed inside them lines or came back when he brought you in, he never forgot you. So you think about a man 85 years old and uh, calling you back and leaving a message and reflecting on a couple of points and saying some kind words to you. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Elton Trueblood was a Quaker theologian, and Trueblood said that a man begins to understand the essence of humanity when he plants a shade tree under which he knows he will never sit. And several years ago, my, my, my two children were involved in a theater production, and they were at a rehearsal, and I heard a voice off in the noise say, practice makes perfect. And I heard one of my young children correct their friend on the fly and say, no, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And they'd never heard John Major say that. And that's when I realized that John Major spent a lifetime planting shade trees. The thing I'm gonna miss the most was he had the, one of the greatest laughs ever, you know, and I love that laugh, those eyes that squint. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, I'm gonna miss that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but when Coach Majors came back to Knoxville after his second stint at Pittsburgh, he bought the house directly across the street from the house they lived in when he lived in Knoxville the first time. And the, the house was a little smaller, but the thing he loved about that house was that it was on the riverside, and he could see the Tennessee River. And... Um, on Tuesday evening, on, on June 2nd, uh, he was out there, and at 11.45 that evening, uh, he was sitting out at the back deck at his table in his chair uh, with, with some reading material. And by 12.15, he was gone. And uh, he was out there overlooking the river in his place. Reading, continuing to soak in information until the last hour of his life. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. Give him a hearty welcome and hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer and the boys will shout. The ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. church bell will peal with joy, hurrah, hurrah, to welcome home our darling boy, hurrah, hurrah, the village lads and lassies say, with roses they will strew the way, and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. I was driving him in my, my car, and he was sitting next to me. He got kind of quiet for a minute, and he looked over at me, and he said, you know what, buddy? I miss your dad. I miss my teammates that have passed. I get lonely. I'm just going to admit it. I get lonely. It's hard when you are living beyond your friends get up every day and they're no longer there to call and to lean on like they used to get around with because I, it makes me very lonely and it makes me sad. On 
on that joyful day when Johnny comes marching home. People like you are Tennessee's football future. And if you give everything you got, you don't have to make excuses or apologies to anybody because when a man gives the best he can give, that's all anybody can ask of him. So straight ahead, good luck, play with pride and enthusiasm.